2013, the agitation for the separate state was at its peak. Many movements, many protests, many struggles. The end result: a bill was passed in Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha. 2nd June 2014 the historic formation of the new state in India Telangana bifurcated from Andhra Pradesh first government was formed by the agitation led TRS party 2023 Telangana has got a new CM we congratulate Mr Revanth Reddy for being the new face of the state and Indian National Congress for being elected by the people's mandate now that there is a change in government we are hearing a lot of doubts about the growth of telangana and the future of real estate in hyderabad what will happen to the real estate sector what is the common man thinking now does he feel that hyderabad's market will collapse like a house of cards this is murli krishna welcome to real talks it's all about real estate In the next few minutes of this video I will try to answer these questions by traveling back in time and arriving at the current state of Hyderabad's real estate market join us as we also explore mind blowing real estate facts of Hyderabad historically right from the Kuli Qutub Shah era to the British rule Hyderabad has always been a thriving market and was a global trade center especially for the diamond industry In 1940 Usman Ali Khan the Nizam of Hyderabad had a net worth of 2 billion dollars equivalent to 17.47 lakh crores now equal to 230 billion dollars as on date which is more than the net worth of Elon Musk the richest man in the world since the inception of Andhra Pradesh there were 17 chief ministers who have ruled the state till the formation of telangana after 2014 mr ksr and revanth reddy are the chief ministers respectively let us now look at the things each cm has done in their tenures specific to telangana region and real estate of hyderabad in particular the very first cm of andhra pradesh mr neelam sanjeev reddy in 1956 brought the basic resources like water and power through the nagarjun sagar dam and sri sailam hydroelectric project iconic public enterprises like nmdc hmt were also established in hyderabad during his regime imagine this in 1956 15964 acres of land in center of hyderabad was claimed by the state government for just 25 rupees that's like buying a piece of the city for a cup of coffee the value of 25 rupees is equivalent to rupees 2388 now as per the inflation index can you really get an acre for rupees 2500 anywhere in telangana now comment below in 1961 it was the turn for the industries to bank upon the water and power existing in the state mr damodaram sanjeevaya had introduced pharma industry in continuation to hyderabad's growth story through the setup of the famous idpl the indian drugs and pharmaceuticals limited at a balanagar in hyderabad hyderabad has now evolved as a global pharma hub and the vaccine capital of the world mr ka subramanand reddy during 1964 till 1971 brought industries like bhcl hindustan cables and several defense establishments like midani bharat dynamics limited which joined the club along with the pharma base in hyderabad interestingly in 1964 11 acre land in the famous momin pet was bid at rupees 2725 which is just 250 rupees per acre an acre in momin pet today 
costs more than 1 crore rupees which is 40,000 times the original price. Do you know 55% of the farmers owned less than 5 acres of land before 1972 in Telangana? It was Mr. P. V. Narsimha Rao who brought the Land Ceiling Act into action and regularized the land ownership concentration which enabled many farmers to the own lands. Since, as per the Act, a family of 5 members can't own more than 27 acres of irrigated land. Then comes ICRISAT, which conducts agriculture research for rural development. It was established in year 1972 during Mr. Narsimha Rao's regime. Because of these two initiatives, Telangana experienced an incredible agriculture revolution in 1970s. Along with the existing industrialization, during 1973-1978, Mr. Jalagam Vengal Rao's vision helped Telangana's education sector to flourish as he set up the prestigious Kakatiya University in Warangal. And on the other hand, he did not compromise on the industrialization happening over the last two decades, which led to investments and more employment. It was a turnaround in 1978 when Mr. Murray Chennareddy made a paradigm shift to the entertainment industry by bringing it from Madras to Hyderabad by allotting lands in Jubilee Hills to set up studios in the early 1980s. Poshest area in Hyderabad was in the making. Today, Tollywood has peaked and has reached the Oscars ruling over Bollywood. By the mid-1980s, the electronic and pharma industries were streamlined with the silver lining of the entertainment industry in the city of Hyderabad. Fun fact for this era was the famous Padmalaya Studios in Sheikhpet Mandal was allotted to actor Krishna in 1982 at a price of mere Rs. 8,500 per acre. Forget about an acre. Can you guess the price of a square ad in Jubilee Hills now? Comment below. In 1984, the celebrated CM of Andhra Pradesh, Mr. NTR, had put a check to the dominant Patel Patwari system that allowed one person the right to collect taxes, maintain the land records and agriculture records, which encouraged corruption, lack of transparency and inefficiencies in Telangana. This was just the start real estate needed. Okay guys, listen to me carefully now. Huda Maitrivanam was the first startup incubator hub of Hyderabad. Yes, you heard it right. In the year 1991, under N. Janardhan Reddy's tenure, Huda Maitrivanam of Amirpet was set up way before T-Hub as a part of Software Technology Parks of India. It was the first successful startup incubator of India, which had companies like Infotech Enterprises and many others. Most of them are either listed now on NSC or had been acquired by global tech giants. This was the first chapter in Hyderabad's IT story. This was the start of a transition of Hyderabad city from a local player into a global power. So now you know why Amirpet is a temple of institutes. Time for a fun fact. Back in 1992, a 350 square yard plot near Amirpet costed 1000 rupees per square yard. But now, rupees 3.5 lakhs is the average rent per month in Amirpet's commercial complex. Price of the plot then is equal to monthly rent now. Could you suggest a better investment than this? Comment below. In 1998, Mr. Nara Chandrababu Naidu had achieved a feat of bringing the biggest IT giant of the world, Microsoft outside USA to Hyderabad. The world's richest man, Bill Gates, and the US President, Bill Clinton, visit to Hyderabad during Mr. Naidu's tenure has marked the city on the world map. The land allocation to Microsoft has not only marked a significant milestone, but also has fueled the IT sector growth in Hyderabad by bringing in other US-based companies. A new city called Cyberabad was born because of all these giants. Gachibolis, Triple IT and ISB were a result of this growth story to supplement the IT companies with local skill. 
The second chapter for the pharma industrialization in Hyderabad started with the establishment of Genome Valley in 1999 during this era. Now, his vision 2020 has blossomed into reality and has bared the fruits of the outer ring road and the international airport. Now, Hyderabad has over 2,500 IT companies and more than 7 lakh IT employees. Famous actor Mr. Murli Mohan sold a plot near Shilpa Ramam Jubilee Enclave for Rs. 750 per square head, which is now trading at Rs. 2 lakh per square head. This Jubilee Hills is the first place in Madhapur. Madhapur is the first place in Madhapur. This is the first place in Madhapur. This is the first place in Madhapur. This is the first place in Madhapur. That's an appreciation of 266 times. Do you think mutual funds can appreciate this much? Comment below. Even though it was Mr. Naidu who had the vision 2020 of ORR and International Airport, Mr. Rajshekar Reddy, during his tenure post-2004, brought these projects to life. He has also enhanced the road connectivity to the airport by building the longest flyover in India, the 11.6 km long PVNR Expressway and curated the plans for the marvelous metro train project. The completion of ORR was a game changer to the Hyderabad real estate market as it now stands as a benchmark for many developers and investors alike. Now, most of the areas inside ORR have corrected to a price of 1 lakh per square head. The initial auction of coca pat lands happened back in 2006 with Huda Golden Mile layout, being auctioned at an average price of 10 crores for 15 plots. The total amount earned by Huda was 703 crores, which was the highest amount received in an auction till then. Now, the average price of a land in Neopolis, coca pat shot up to 70 crores in the recent auction. That is a whopping 600% appreciation in the last 17 years. I will give you all my money, invest in gold and get me the same returns. Next came in Kiran Kumar Reddy, who before the formation of Telangana state warned that a new state would be a threat to the national security and would result in a severe power crisis, along with loss in employment crisis in irrigation sector, failure in education system and would result in an economic disaster. The new state in India, Telangana, was formed after 67 years of independence in 2014. Defining all the odds came in Mr. KCR, proving Mr. Kiran Kumar Reddy wrong by implementing lift irrigation projects like Kaleshwaram project, Mission Kakatiya and Mission Bagiradha and Panchayat Raj reforms. His son, KTR, had been the face of IT ministry and urban development of the state and has implemented SRDP program for construction of flyovers, completed metro train phase 1 project, brought many foreign investments through various companies, incubated T-Hub and T-Works to foster startups. As on date, Hyderabad stands at 44% of the national IT employment with one out of three jobs in India coming from Hyderabad. During his regime, many proposals like Pharma City, Telangana Mobility Valley, NIMS, Regional Ring Road, Radial Roads connecting ORR and RRR, Metro Train Phase 2 and 3 expansion, MMTS expansion, hardware parks under the central and state government's vision were proposed and somewhere initiated which in turn boosted the real estate. Let's look at the real estate part of it. There are four key factors that impact real estate prices, availability and investment potential. Demographics. This is the data that reflects the composition of a population such as age, race, gender, income, migration patterns and population growth. Hyderabad has been consistently seeing more than 5 lakh migrants entering the city every year in search of jobs or business. This in turn boosts the real estate industry. Interest rates. Lending rates of the bank can affect purchase prices. Home loan prices are slowly reducing from 14% in year 1990s until the last couple of years ranging from 
6.5% to 8.5%. This will reduce going forward to 5 to 6% based on country's GDP growth. The economy. Economic indicators include GSDP, employment data, manufacturing activity, prices of goods, etc. will have the key role to play. The past decade of Telangana has been flourishing very much due to these key factors. Government policies. Legislation is another key factor that will impact demand and prices in real estate. For example, in the year 2022-23, out of the total state budget of 2.56 lakh crores, more than 66,000 crores were allocated to the welfare schemes and the main source of this expense was compensated from real estate through income from registration charges, development charges and e-auctions. In fact, the state of Telangana earned Rs 12,365 crores from registration fees in the physical year 2022, which is equivalent to 20% of the contribution to the expense towards social welfare schemes of entire Telangana state. This reflects the importance of real estate sector. In fact, an acre of development in Hyderabad yields up to Rs 13.61 crores of revenue approximately to the state government. Yes, you heard it right. It's whopping 13.61 crores. Let me prove it by showing you the math. Let's take a simple example where an acre of development yields minimum of 1 lakh SFT of built-up area. There are basically three stages of development. Land acquisition, development phase, post-development. In the development phase, let's assume one acre of land costs rupees 10 crores then on purchase of the land the government gets 7.6 percent as stamp duty out of it which is 76 lakhs in the second phase there are three components such as pre-permission charges building permission charges gst charges on materials the pre-permission charges include nala conversion charges pollution control environmental clearance, fire, water and electricity. For Nala conversion, the surcharge is 3% on the registered land value, which is coming around 30 lakhs. Now, let's look at Pollution Control Board clearance, environmental clearance, fire, water and electricity board permissions and others, which cost approximately 350 rupees per SFT. So for 1 lakh SFT, it is around 3.5 crores. Next, building permission charges cost the developer around 100 rupees per SFT. So for 1 lakh SFT, it is rupees 1 crore. During the construction phase, if we assume the cost of construction is roughly around 2000 per SFT, then for 1 lakh SFT will cost 20 crores. If you look at the average GST for the cost of materials, which are shown in the table. It comes down to average 20% in which 10% of this goes to state as state GST, which will come to rupees 2 crores. Let's now look at the post construction and the registration process, which is final stage. If we assume the sale to be done at the rate 5000 per SFT, then the total sale value for 1 lakh per SFT will be rupees 50 crores. On this turnover, the state government will be getting a registration charges 7.6% of the sale value, which is rupees 3.8 crores. Again, a GST of 5% will be charged to the customer on the finished flat, out of which 2.5% will be state GST. So. 2.5% of the sale value, which is rupees 50 crore, will be rupees 1.25 crores. If you add all these values shown on the table, it is coming down to rupees 13.61 crores. So, an acre of land acquisition, development, and handover cycle yields to rupees 13.61 crores. In this, 
property tax will be recurring revenue every year till lifetime to the state government 13.61 crores per acre revenue for state government is arrived assuming builder had constructed only five floored apartments with built up area in an acre of land which costs around 10 crores and assuming cost of construction to be rupees 2000 per sft only in the recent auction an acre of land went for 100 crores and many 55 floors apartments are coming up also a recent cbre report states that the cost of construction for a high rise apartment above 30 floors would cost in the range of rupees 5061 rupees 5593 instead of rupees 2000 per sft just imagine what will be the revenue generated with such kind of developments do you really think our cm mr revent reddy will take the risk of losing this kind of a revenue i don't think so this shows the magnitude of the contribution the revenue of the state by the real estate additionally Hyderabad city itself contributes to 49.6% of the total tax revenue collected by the state in 2023 which is whopping rupees 91083 crores out of the total tax collection of rupees 183362 crores across the Telangana state that means only Hyderabad contributes 50% of the total tax revenues Now the new policies proposed by the Congress government towards social welfare would require an additional budget of rupees 68652 crores towards dalit bandhu indramma housing scheme loan waivers to the farmers etc for example for the new government to cater the raitu nestam scheme it requires rupees 15000 crores of budget so this would require the government to grant real estate development permissions for up to 11 not 2 acres of land approximately if it wishes to square off this component only through real estate now looking at the additional burden for the congress government and looking at the share of revenue contributions from hyderabad city in the form of development charges registration charges and taxes it sounds logical for me to think that the congress government should focus more on scaling up the successful real estate revenue model to cater to these schemes in conclusion irrespective of the chief ministers and political parties the story of hyderabad was always on the sunny side from the lack of internet to the towering skyscrapers hyderabad has traversed an incredible journey marking substantial progress along the way being blessed with all these visionary leaders Hyderabad real estate story was glorified and now with Mr Revent Reddy who is the only chief minister with the real estate background the future seems to be in safe hands sir congress adhikaram lo unnapude coca plant lo 14 kota ekaram ammudu poyindi congress unnapude nirminchina outer ring road lo ee ecosystem tone ee real estate anedi poorthi sthayalo abhruddhi jarigindi revent reddy anangane gurtu vachedi real estate aa real estate to ఫ్యామిలీ నుంచి వచ్చినో నేను ఔటర్ రింగ్ రోడ్ అయ్యే కంటే ముందే కోకాపేట్లో గేటెడ్ కమ్యూనిటీస్ కట్టినో నేను సో రియల్ ఎస్టేటు ఏ విధంగా డెవలప్ చేయాలి నాకున్న యుఎస్పీనే ఈ రోజుకు రాజకీయాలలో నేను అంతో ఎంతో మనగడ సాధిస్తున్నా నా ఖర్చులు నేను పెట్టుకోగలుగుతున్నా అంటే నేను రియల్ ఎస్టేటులో అంతో ఎంతో సంపాదించిందే ఈరోజు నన్ను కాపాడుతుంది సో దాన్ని ఏ లెవెల్ల తీసుకెళ్లాలో నాకు తెలిసినంతగా ఎవరికి రాష్ట్రంలో తెలియదు రేవంత్ రెడ్డి హిమ్సెల్ఫ్ మెన్షన్ దాట్ హిస్ పేటెంట్ అండ్ యుఎస్పి ఈజ్ ఇన్ హిస్ రియల్ ఎస్టేట్ ఇన్వెస్ట్మెంట్స్ హీ క్లియర్లీ సెట్ హిస్ రియల్ ఎస్టేట్ ఇన్వెస్ట్మెంట్స్ ఫ్యూల్డ్ హిస్ పొలిటికల్ కెరియర్ అండ్ మెన్షన్ దాట్ ల్యాండ్ ప్రైజెస్ సోర్ టు ఫోర్టీన్ క్రోర్స్ పర్ ఏకర్ ఇన్ కోకాపేట్ డ్యూరింగ్ ద కాంగ్రెస్ రూల్ అండ్ రెవీల్డ్ హిస్ ఇన్వాల్వ్మెంట్ ఇన్ విల్లాస్ కన్స్ట్రక్షన్ దేర్ సిన్స్ హీ బిలాంగ్స్ టు ఆర్ వెరీ ఓన్ రియల్ ఎస్టేట్ ఇండస్ట్రీ and looking at his plans for the city's development and real estate of hyderabad i am hopeful that mr revent reddy 
has a great vision for the future of Hyderabad real estate and will continue the commitments and MOUs of the previous government as done by his predecessors over the decades and add his name to the future of Hyderabad's wall of fame. Please like, share and subscribe. Do check out our new Magnific Inventory channel for latest properties updates. Signing off, Murli Krishna.